Okay, so today we're out here in an extra mobile home that I have where I kind of store all of my extra projects. There's engines laying around, parts for every quad you've ever heard of, a couple mini bike frames, and the subject of today's video, a three-wheeler. Specifically, this three-wheeler. So what we have here is a 1986 Honda 125M three-wheeler. Uh, it's a lot different than the earlier 125s. This one actually has the upright engine with the cylinder here. The a couple years before that had it laid down. Uh, looks like a lot of those Chinese copy ones. This is not that style. I much prefer this style, actually. Uh, this bike has been sitting for probably about 15 years. Uh, I have personally ridden it before. It was one that used to belong, well, it belongs to my family. It was given to us sometime probably the early 2000s. When I moved out, moved away, it kind of just sat. Uh, so we're going to see what we can do about it to get it running. So, of course, in order for an engine to run, it needs the main three things. It needs compression, it needs fuel, and it needs spark. But to run for any more than a couple minutes at best, it needs oil, so we're going to start with that. I don't necessarily care that it's good clean oil, I just want to make sure that there is oil and that it's not mostly water, because it has been sitting for a very long time. Okay, does have oil. I would say it does look a little bit milky. But it's definitely more oil than water. It will work at least long enough to get my testing done. You know, there's, there's something in it. So now, I guess we'll make sure the engine even spins. It spins. Pull rope doesn't quite return nicely like it should, but the engine does spin. I feel like there's compression, for as unofficial as that test is. Doesn't seem to have any real tight spots, so that's good. I guess next we'll check for spark. That is unpleasantly tight. That worries me a little. Okay, it did come loose. It comes out smoothly, so I don't believe there's any thread damage, so that's good. I probably have my younger self to thank for that being that tight. I hate that guy. It's an NGK. There's so much black crud all over this, I can't even read the number. Plug looks dark. Maybe it was rich at the time. In my experience, most of these old three-wheelers are pretty rich. I'm going to pull it over a few times, just see if there's anything in the cylinder, blow it out. Doesn't seem to be. So the next fun task is I have to be able to watch that while I pull this. Probably would be easier if it was lowered. We have amazing spark, you know, because it's a Honda. I mean, what's 15 years, really? Guess we'll do a compression check. tester all hooked up here. Whenever you're doing these, you want to give it wide open throttle, let as much air in as possible. I'll give it a couple good pulls while watching the gauge to see what the highest it gets is. Looks like we're stopping. 
stopping at right around 135 or so. I'm not 100% sure what spec for this is, but I do believe the nose on the three wheeler will run on 135. Actually, that sounds pretty good thinking about it. I will look it up at a later time. Okay, so we have what I believe to be decent compression. Like I said, I have to look that up. Uh, we have spark, spins freely. It's the only thing possibly missing is fuel. We just take a look into the gas tank to see what it looks like. Could be horrible. Okay. It's not spotless in there, but it's not by any means the worst I've seen. Most of it does look like it's just surface, not something I'm really going to be super worried about. So I guess I'll get some gas in that and see what happens. In the meantime, I think I'm probably going to pull this off and get to the air filter. There were a couple mouse turds up on the back, so I wanted to make sure they didn't make a nest inside. In hindsight, I probably should have checked for that before I cranked the engine a few times. But I didn't, so here we are. Okay, so there's not a mouse nest, and that's the good news. The bad news is that there is not an air filter. There is just a little screen part just a little screen part that goes in there that the filter would go over. We will need to address that at a later time, but for what we're doing with it right now, that will be okay. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of gas straight into the intake here. I have a little sprayer here. It essentially has two stroke mix, so a little bit of oil in it as well. And just going to see if doing that, if I can get it to just pop off real quick. It is in neutral. And the pulse start appears to have given up. I'm going to put it back up and I think I'm going to probably just hook a, a jump box up to it and see if the electric start works. Hmm. Okay, so the electric start does work. Um, got everything in there. I spread a little bit of gas into the intake and we're just going to see if it does anything. The throttle is free, which I guess I already did know from the compression check. Okay, so with all of those things, it still didn't really want to fire up or even show any sign that it was interested in doing so. Um, so I pulled the spark plug and just w with that out cranked it a few times just in case I flooded it. Uh, I was cupping my hand over the intake at first, so I may have just... I may have flooded it thinking that I needed to get some gas into there. So I blew that all out and I put a little bit of some, uh, some flammable stuff on the spark plug directly. So we're going to see if that does it. Okay, and I guess that's what it needed. I would like it if I could get it running off of the gas that I put in the tank now. Like it's already on reserve, so it should start. more like useful for fire. 
No. No, okay. Okay, so ultimately, I'm not going to put into the video all the time I've spent trying to start it. It really only wants to start if I have my hand kind of, you know, manually choking on and off of here. And even when it does start, it doesn't want to stay running by any means. So I'm sure I have to get into the carburetor. Which I should have expected anyways because it's been sitting for so long. Okay, so we're going to remove the gas tank to give us access to it. Shut the fuel off over here. Looks like it's going to be easier to pull the line off of the tank rather than the carburetor. It's definitely on there pretty good. Wouldn't be surprised if I ended up having to replace the line. The bolt on the back is already broken, so I just had to lift it up off the stud. Move this off the bushings and set that aside. Top of the carb will just unscrew. And that's, the base, that's basically the throttle assembly. <coughs> you technically can remove this carburetor without pulling the airbox back, but in my experience it's just way easier to get anything out of the way that you can. The boot going from the carburetor to the airbox is hard as a rock because it's old, so I'm going to have to get my heat gun out and warm that up in order to remove it. Okay, um, first of all, sorry about the audio. My normal camera won't really do any close-ups, so we had to switch to a cell phone camera. Because my normal camera is cheap Chinese stuff off of Amazon. Speaking of cheap Chinese stuff off of Amazon, I don't know the history of this three-wheeler as well as I thought. I was under the impression that I was the last person to touch it sometime in the early 2000s. But then I pulled off this uh, Geely. J-I-E-L-I. -E and it's got a little bit of surface dirt on it, but it's awfully clean, and it's, it's definitely a cheap Chinese carburetor. And uh, if I was taking guesses on it, I would say that's a lot of why it's not going to run really, very well right now. So, I'm still going to get into this and just see if there is anything obvious. But I'm not hopeful. I have had good luck actually with a lot of the cheap Chinese knockoffs on a lot of Yamaha stuff. I've had several Warriors that had Chinese carburetors and you'd never know around on it. But almost everything I get for Honda that's the cheap Chinese, it, it just doesn't work at all. So carb ball off, nothing real exciting in there. It, uh, it looks spotless inside actually. Still going to keep disassembling. I'd still rather see an actual something wrong with it. Because usually when I get a cheap Chinese carburetor, it might not idle perfectly, but as long as I stay on the gas, I can get it to run. The pilot jet itself is clear. Main jet is clear. Everything seems to be clear, so I'm just going to have to assume that the reason it's not working is because these Chinese copies are not very good copies. Um, now that being said, I have a lot of bikes, and because I have a lot of bikes and I've had them, I also have any manner of parts laying around. I do not have a complete carburetor. I do have most of a carburetor at least, that I believe goes to one of these. It looks right, so I gathered up whatever pieces looked like they went to it, and I think we're going to start building off of that and seeing what we can get. So it's definitely not the cleanest thing around, because I just pulled it out of a box, but it is an OEM carburetor. So we're going to tear this down, clean it, Hopefully I have the right jets to put in, because I don't trust the Chinese ones. And see if we can get anything better to come from that. So... The 
The only thing that's actually in here right now, the pilot adjustment screw, and then this piece here that the main jet goes into. Um, I guess that on a parts diagram, sometimes it's called a main nozzle. I guess it also, it would be an emulsion tube as well. Um, it appears to be pretty clean. You have a can of carb cleaner here. I'll remove the pilot adjustment screw because there's probably an O-ring on there. And typically you don't want carb clean or brake clean or anything like that to touch any of the rubber parts. Uh, well, there's not an O-ring, but there should be. So we will get back to that as well. First thing, I guess a lot of times too, if I'm cleaning a carburetor, a lot of these I'm fairly familiar with, I've done a lot of, but if I never have, you just kind of follow the fuel through it. So the gas line is right here. You can see the tube, it actually goes into here to where the needle and seat go into. So if I just spray some through that, fuel comes out. So that being this area, fuel can get into the carburetor bowl that's on the bottom. So we know that the carburetor can fill with gas, so from there, we just have to make sure that it can get up into the actual Venturi tube and into the engine. So carburetors have two, well, this carburetor, I should say, because modern ones have a whole bunch of stuff, and there's even some that have less than this. But this carburetor is a pretty good example of what a lot of four-wheelers are going to have, or in this case, three-wheelers. Uh, it's going to have a pilot jet and a main jet. The pilot jet kind of controls everything at idle and under very small amounts of throttle. The main jet's more for you know, closer to wide open throttle. And then there's the needle on the throttle part that's going to control a lot of your mid-range. So I still haven't located the actual jets for it. I have an assortment up top. I'll have to look at what they're supposed to be. But I can at least see if the carburetor itself is clean. Which... It at least has surface stuff that I'm just going to spray out on the floor. Now that's not on camera, but it, I'm spraying stuff out. It doesn't really need to be. Um, a lot of times there's air inlets on the, uh, the air filter side of the carburetor. Those usually come through and they mix this air with the fuel at the jets. So if I spray through it, it's likely to come out one of these holes. That one is apparently for the main jet, because that's what that comes out of. There's another one over here, and it comes out the other one. So that one helps with the pilot. So the main jet is going to go in the center one. And I don't know how well we can actually see it. I'll probably have to ask my wife if we can see it. But in the very center, Bring it in closer and there's a little brass... There's a little brass piece in there, right in the center. There he is. You can see that there. That's where the main jet's fuel is going to come up, and that needle I was talking about is actually going in there and metering the fuel through that. So at this point, those passages are clear from this end to these. Um, the nozzle is good. I don't have the jets themselves, so we'll get back to that. Um, but if I spray up through that... Where the main jet and needle would be, like I said, I don't even have to spray it. I can, my straw goes <laughs> right in through it. So, absolutely clear, no issues there. The only other thing to check is from this pilot jet where that is. I know that the air gets through there, and once I get a clean jet in here, it will come up through right there. And there's very small holes at the engine side, on the engine side of the throttle valve. So if I spray this in here, it will either come out where that pilot adjustment screw was, which it does, but if I block that, it should also come out in this main tube here. Mm -hmm. And it sure does look like it does. So this carburetor body appears to be clean and functioning just fine. We just need to get some good components back in it. So this main... Nozzle slash emulsion tube seemed clean. I could hold it up to the light and see through all of these little holes on the side. But I have cleaner and I have it apart, so it just makes sense to me to still spray a little bit of stuff through it. 
Then we'll thread that back in. Um, when I found this, I did find another jet sitting next to it. I'm not sure if it's the right one. Actually, I know that's not the right one. There are no threads on this. I have no idea what that is. A couple other jets sitting there. I'm about 99% sure that these jets were only sitting there by chance. So, I don't actually know what they are. Some them there. Then I'm going to look up what jets are supposed to be in here and then we'll get back to this. Okay, so I have looked up the proper jets for it and I guess it's supposed to be a 95 main jet and a 35 pilot jet, which I did find. So I'm going to put those in right now. The pilot jet I had was actually new. The main jet's not, so I'll make sure I spray that decently well. It's not new, but it does seem like it flows just fine. So we'll put that up in here. Yeah, I just give them a basic snug. They don't have to be super tight. Um, Okay, now one thing that I could have a problem with here is with my OEM style carburetor here, I don't seem to have the needle for the float. And I'm not sure how similar or different the Chinese one is, so I don't know that I can use it. I mean, visibly, it looks like the same design. Um, and now looking at the floats, actually, I can't use the OEM float either. I I have a tab broken off. This tab right here is actually what hits the needle and pushes it up. And that's just gone off my OEM style. So I guess I'm going to try putting the Chinese one in it and just seeing if it works. I really wish I didn't have to do that, but I have what I have. If it doesn't, then I guess I am taking to the internet to get some parts. A lot of the stuff is no longer available, but I'm sure I can find needle and seat just fine. Or if, there's probably somebody with a used float. It does seem like it sits there appropriately. <clears throat> throw the fuel line on it and just... There's a good example of Chinese quality. I just want to pull a fuel line off of that other carburetor and the fitting actually pulled out of the carburetor. Anyways, putting the fuel line on this to do a basic check of the float and the needle and seat. So if I blow air through this, sitting like this, the weight of the float is actually closing it and I shouldn't be able to blow in through this. And I can't. But if I flip it over where this float is down, I should be able to now. Then as the bottom of the, f if it was assembled, gas would come in here until the float bowl got filled up, in which case the float would do exactly what it suggests and float. And once the fuel level reached a certain level in there, it would shut this. So I can test it just by simulating if the fuel was full. I can blow through it here and I shouldn't be able to when it's up here. It appears to be operating like it should. I will still have to kind of watch for it. You know, it is still a Chinese part. 
Um, but I have what I have. So we're going to put that on it and just see if that works. I also don't have a float bowl gasket, so I'm going to take that off of the Chinese one as well. And once again, hope that that works. I will still likely, even if it does, I'm still likely going to order the correct stuff. Okay, well that's interesting. This is uh, it's not the same gasket. Float bowls are just a little bit different. This one has a little cutout here that doesn't really, that doesn't do anything, even on the Chinese one. So that actually has that cut out for that. So I'll have to see if I can locate a gasket. It's kind of a shame. Everything else seems to be appropriate. If I looked around a lot, I may be able to find one, but I decided to just cut off the extra part because the main O-ring part is still intact. And I'm not really going to feel bad about it because it was a Chinese part anyways. So I have that gasket there. There's nothing that actually holds this one's float pin in, so you got to be careful when you tip it. Okay, there's only two ways that you can put these screws in. There's only two of them, so it can go this way or this way. There is a right way and a wrong way. It's just slightly different and it will let you know. And we just have the pilot adjustment screw. Now, I probably should look up what the factory setting for this is. Essentially, you lightly tighten it down just until it barely seats, and then you back it out a specified number of turns. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, so your half, one. We're going to go one and a half. That seems to be fairly decent as far as what makes sense and what doesn't. Heck, yeah, that's a poor way to put that. As far as what I'm used to seeing. I also have a little idle screw i got to put in here. Okay. So, I don't like that I had to use a couple of the Chinese parts. But, like I said, I have what I have. If I have to and it doesn't work, I'll order the right stuff. Another part that I'm going to have to order is the actual throttle, the cap for this, the needle, all that. I don't have that for an OEM Honda either. But it is, is, it's the best that I'm going to get it with what I have, so I'm gonna get back and throw it on now. Okay, so I got that carburetor back together. I did verify that even though I don't want to use it, that cap and throttle slide off the Chinese one does work with this OEM style. So I'll get that put back on and see if we can work with it. I'm gonna have to heat gun the, uh, the air filter boot again to get that back on. Okay, so I have the carburetor back on. I just get the gas tank, hook the gas back up, and we'll see if those Chinese parts are going to fall through for us. I'm not real hopeful. The first thing that we're going to watch for is because of that Chinese needle and seat, and really, even if it was OEM, I'd still watch. But just, I turn the gas on, I want to make sure it doesn't come out through the extra vents in the car, indicating that it's leaking. And it's not so far, but I'm going to let that sit there for a few before I try to start anything. Seems like it's doing okay though. So I'm going to get my battery stuff hooked back up and we'll try to start. One last check to make sure there's no leaks. The throttle is clear. I don't know if the idle is okay, so I may have to give it some gas. Fairly warm in here, so I don't know if I need to choke. I'll try it without it first. Okay, let's try choking it.
too low, I'm going to raise that and then try again. hanging idle, which definitely we can't have. It's not right, so that's the first thing, but also it's a three-wheeler, and it has the same brakes as most three-wheelers. We can't have that not idling down for us. At this point, if I was taking a guess, I would say it's, it's probably running lean. I know that the throttle itself does close all the way, so it, it either has an air leak somewhere or the carburetor is not adjusted properly. So I'm going to fire it back up. And then I'm going to spray some flammable stuff around the, around the carburetor, the intake, and everywhere, just seeing if there's an air leak. If it changes the idle, it will indicate that there is. adjusting the pilot adjuster to be a little bit richer. This one is on the engine side, so by opening it, I let in more fuel. It's also idling itself up right now, which indicates it's probably trying to run out of gas on it. What I've come to terms with, I can't really get any adjustment out of it to make it hang less. I can't spray anything on there and get any change in the idle based on that. So the problem, it's not likely that there's an air leak, but it is likely that it's running lean. So I don't have an air filter for it right now, which would make it run a little bit lean. But I've also seen a lot of these Hondas that are not really that picky, but it is acting lean. So the only other thing I can do there is I'm going to try putting a larger pilot jet in it. Unfortunately, I have to order that. I don't have any here. So I'll do that, and then I'll get back. Okay, so we're working outside today. I got some paint going on in the garage. Um, well, I believe when I was last recording, it wasn't running real great. It had a hanging idle because it was running lean. Uh, it had some other carburetor issues, too, probably because I had to use the Chinese parts in it. Uh, it ended up leaking all my gas out uh, all over my garage floor. So I'm going to add some of that, and then we'll see how it runs. The change that I've made is that I put a bigger pilot jet in, so it should run a with a little bit more gas at idle and very low throttle position. There's probably plenty of gas for what we're doing. battery and it's not any good, so we're going to have to full start. I'll make it run pretty good. Idle comes back down when it should.
so all in all it's done pretty well uh, it definitely burns some oil that's unfortunately a problem I'm just gonna have to deal with for a little while because uh, I cannot find the top end kit for it I looked before I started just because I kind of anticipated a bike this old needing one I can find one very obviously Chinese knockoff set and I almost figure I'm better off with Honda OEM ones that burn a little bit of oil rather than the Chinese piston and stuff that might not last at all. I'd hate to blow up a Honda based on some, you know, just some cheap parts like that. So I'll put oil in it when it needs it. All in all, though, I think that this is a good running bike now. Perfect. Okay, so thanks for watching the video, and uh, see you with the next project.